Well, uh, I'm excited to be here, and um, you know, I start out every time I'm, I'm speaking somewhere. I've, been, I've had the, the fortune over recent weeks to travel the state and speak to a lot of groups, and I'm just, I'm a dad, I'm a husband, I'm a Tennessean, and like so many of you, when this started to go down in March, I just started looking around, and what in the world is going on? This, like, like, like you thought, this can't be right. <laughs> Something is wrong. Uh, can this possibly be constitutional? Certainly not. And when things started going down from the top and the governor enacted emergency powers and began to delegate that authority, immediately I went to our Tennessee Constitution because there's something that I know that I've never seen before in my 42 years as an American Governors don't make laws. They never have. County mayors don't just make laws. Uh, governors don't just delegate authority to people to do stuff because they like it or they think it's a good idea. That's not the way government works. In fact, our Tennessee Constitution gives us a duty to resist such nonsense. So let me read this to you in case you don't know it's there. Uh, it's Article 1, Section 2 of the Tennessee Constitution. So right up at the top, it gives us this charge. It says this, that government being instituted for the common benefit, the doctrine of non-resistance against arbitrary power is oppressive and absurd slavish and destructive of the good and happiness the good and happiness of mankind in other words our tennessee constitution says don't just resist arbitrary power but let me be clear to not resist is absurd and it will eventually destroy you let me ask you a question would you consider the the possibility that cherry picking who is essential and who is not essential might be considered arbitrary power. What, what about this? Here's, here's something really interesting that, that you may not know. Here in Nashville, where you can get cited for not wearing a mask by someone that works for the water department, but never mind that, if you were cited in Nashville for breaking the law of not wearing a mask, it's a class C misdemeanor. You could get a $50 fine or up to 30 days in jail. But if you cross the border and you commit that same offense in my beautiful Williamson County, it's a class A. You could be fined $2,500 and possibly a year in prison. Same state authority, same, same law you're breaking, two different penalties just 10 minutes down the road. Might that be, I don't know, arbitrary power? Of course it is. And let me tell you something right now. You and I, from here on out, are going to have to do the work of knowing our constitutional rights ourselves. It's a 26-page PDF, y'all, the Tennessee Constitution. Download it. It's written in English. Because if you and I don't know that Constitution, and you and I don't know where the authority of our elected officials begins and where it ends, and if you and I don't hold them accountable, to the limitations of that authority, they will use unlimited, unbridled authority as long as you don't challenge them on it and as long as you don't know that they don't have it. We've got to stand up for those rights ourselves. Let me tell you something I, I heard in Knox County that scared the mess out of me. There was a county commission meeting in Knox County and they were talking about the County Board of Health. And it's, it's a similar situation that you have here in Davidson County where you have this autonomous board of health who are making all of these rules and regulations that you are now living under. Well, the law director of Knox County was asked a question about how he interprets state statute that gives county boards of health their authority. And they asked him this question. Do you think that for the safety of the public and the public health, that do you interpret the state statute to say that county boards of health could confiscate guns? 
Imagine a situation where potentially the County Board of Health considers there's a mental health crisis and guns are dangerous and they need to take away all the guns in the county. Do you know what he said? The question was if uh, I guess you're referring to what they did up in New York City where they banned the uh, sugar drinks. So I'll answer that by giving you from the statute so there will not be any misunderstanding. The Board of Health under the statute can adopt rules and regulations as may be necessary or appropriate to protect the general health and safety of the citizens of the county, period. They have that broad, broad authority. There's no limitation on that authority. Um, with that being said, uh, I've looked over this and uh, there, basically there's no limitation on the power of the Board of Health as long as they say that uh, the safety is that correct in their in their opinion if it uh, they can do adopt rules and regulations as may as may be necessary or appropriate to protect the general health and safety of the citizens that's the that's the law thank you sir commissioner ward i just had a follow-up on what commissioner biggs asked to make me think of another question along the same lines we, uh, as at last commission, we had a lady speak very passionately about the gun murder rate we've been having in East Knoxville. Could the board, in theory, say that we have a gun problem and ban guns to some degree? As broad as this is written, and if you follow what people across the country are doing where they're saying guns are a safety hazard and they want to cut down the limitation on guns and all of that, it's arguable that what I just read is something that would fall within the province of the Board of Health. He said yes. <laughs> he said yes, absolutely. I interpret our current state statute to say that the county board, and I'm thinking to myself, has this guy ever heard of the Second Amendment? Or what about in our Tennessee Constitution? What about Article 1, Section 26 that gives you and I the right to bear arms in the state of Tennessee. And in fact says that if the legislature, if the General Assembly was going to regulate anything about arms, it's not whether or not you have them, it's whether it's how we wear them, how and where we present them. So this idea that a state statute, get this, here's, the, here's where we are in 2020, nullifies our constitutional rights. That's where we are today. The Constitution doesn't apply to COVID. There is no Constitution. Why? Oh, because COVID. We're all going to die. The world's too dangerous. You don't deserve the Constitution. But what I'm here to tell you is if we don't have a Constitution, then we don't have a we the people. The Constitution is the we the people. And you and I are going to have to do the hard work of risking getting canceled. That's what we're all scared of. I know some of you that are sitting here today, maybe you're a business owner. Well, we can't speak up because we might get canceled. I'm here to tell you something. For those of you scared of confrontation, for those of you scared of getting canceled by cancer, cancel culture, you may not want to pay the price now, but let me assure you there will be a day in time that if you are unwilling to stand and pay the price now, you will pay the price later. And I promise you the price that we're going to pay later is too great. And it's a price you wish you would have paid now. So my challenge to you is stop putting up with this unlawful, unconstitutional nonsense nonsense whenever elected officials make laws and operate outside of a constitutional authority that they do not have that's when me as a citizen checks out i'm out let me read this to you, you we had two really important court decisions one in michigan and one in pennsylvania and the judge in the federal district court in Pennsylvania said something pretty amazing that I want to make sure you hear. Now this is a federal 
district judge in Pennsylvania where they ruled, this was a federal case, it was a First Amendment and 14th Amendment case. And there was a group of counties that sued the governor of Pennsylvania over the constitutionality of their mandates. Well, as you may know, the judge ruled those mandates unconstitutional. But here's the challenge that he laid before us. He says this, good intentions toward a laudable end are not alone enough to uphold governmental action against a constitutional challenge. Indeed, the greatest threats to our system of constitutional liberties may arise when the ends are laudable. And the intent is good, especially in a time of emergency. In an emergency, even a vigilant public may let down its guard over its constitutional liberties, listen to this, only to find that liberties once relinquished are hard to recoup, and that restrictions, while expedient in the face of an emergency, may persist long after the danger has passed. This judge, a federal judge, is issuing you and I a warning in this ruling. What you give, you can look back through human history, what you give away. The, the man from Louisiana, my, my home state actually, who's running for US Senate said it himself and he's absolutely right. What you give away, they don't just give back. And this judge is issuing a warning. You let your, in, in, in the first two weeks, the first three weeks, there may have been a thought that, hey, we need to be prudent here. We're not sure what's gonna happen. We were all willing to give up liberty for a, a short season. But what, we're like nine months into this thing now? What you continue to relinquish, you face the threat of not getting back. This situation is changing. It's changing the culture of who we are in America. I don't know if you see it, but I feel it every day. In Williamson County, in Franklin, I'm, I'm like, I'm the only guy in Publix without a mask. It's just me. Oh, there's some other ones. Are you there? You know what, I have an idea. How about like Tuesday at 6 p.m. is Patriot Shopping Day at Publix? <laughs> We're just gonna all go in there to say, people are like, what in the world is going on? We gotta start doing crazy stuff like that and waking people up, because they're asleep. They are asleep. I wanna leave you with this challenge. Do not comply. Because you know, you know France is already shut down again, right? I saw something on the news yesterday. There was a, some doctor from Chicago or something. We're heading towards lockdown again and here in America. We gotta lock it down, y'all. Second wave is coming. If you own a business, don't close! If you are a pastor, keep your church open and worship. Come on, y'all. It's up to you and me. It's up to you and me. God bless you.